Hi, I'm LJ Cohen. I'm a member here at Clayworks in Ware, Massachusetts. And today I'm gonna to demonstrate how to make these little birds, which are fairly simple and made out of two pinch pots of clay. So what you'll need for today's activity is some clay. Doesn't matter really what clay body you choose. Um, it can be white, it can be brown, it can be speckled. Does not really matter. I, in fact, often recycle all of my clay scraps together to make a um, mishmash clay, and it works just fine. We need some tools. Uh, I have an assortment of tools here. It's a little wooden stick, a tool that's a double-ended uh, knife tool, a pin tool, which you'll definitely need. And then I picked up these three clay working tools maybe at Michael's, I don't really remember. And they're metal balls on one end and they're different um, points on the other end and it makes a nice carving tool, it makes a nice smoothing tool. I find I use these an awful lot. You'll also need a brush and while some people use slip, which is a slurry, a wet slurry of clay to attach pieces, I find working with wet clay this is just white vinegar. Just put it in a little bowl and you'll need a um, brush to dab the um, edges so that you can seal your clay together. And the only other tool that I have here, which is optional, is I have a stamp, which is my maker's mark. Uh, it has my name and a little dragonfly on it. So before we begin, just a reminder that clay dust can be very dangerous to breathe in. So. Um, you always want to make sure you clean up with water and a sponge, not sweeping. You don't want to get the clay dust up in the air. Okay, so we're going to make these little pinch pot animals. A little earlier, I actually prepared two pinch pots. And then I'm going to show you how to make the pinch pots, and then we'll use these examples to put them together to create our hollow form that will then be made to create the bird. take a small bit of clay and if you want a bird that ends up being about this size sort of fit in your hand you really don't want more than a third of a pound to maximum a half a pound of clay so you're going to take that clay and you're just going to roll it into a ball doesn't need to be perfect just needs to be round ish you can also roll it on your surface if that's easier for you. And then once you have your two clay balls, each of these is going to be a hollow pot, two little pinch pots that we put together. They're simple, deceptively simple, but you can make a, an awful lot of things with a pinch pot. In your non-dominant hand, hold your clay ball. With your dominant thumb, you're just gonna stick your thumb into the ball of clay, into the middle, but make sure you don't punch through the other side. Ideally, you want about a half an inch thickness in the bottom, and then you're gonna make a half an inch thickness all the way around the walls. Put your thumb back in that hole, and you're just gonna rotate the clay as you pinch it between your fingers and your thumb. And every time you go around, the pinch pot gets a little bit wider and a little bit taller. Again, you don't want to punch through your pot on any of the sides or on the bottom. And you don't want to create thin spots in the wall because that will be a weak point in your construction. And you're always feeling for just how thick it is. And you're working towards making those walls as even as possible. And now I'm working the top a little bit just to make sure that my walls nice and even. Sometimes you'll notice that your clay will crack around the top and that's just an indication that your clay is a little bit dry. If it gets super dry and super annoying and you can't heal the cracks, you get your little spray bottle and just moisten the clay just a little bit. All right, so here's one pinch pot, about half inch thick walls all around and on the bottom. So I'm gonna set that aside, make my second pinch pot. There we go, two pinch pots. I'm gonna set these aside because they're a little bit wet to be putting together and working with. Instead, we're gonna work with the ones that I set aside a little bit earlier. What I'm going to eventually do is put them together, 
create a hollow form. And the hollow form an, is essentially an egg, and an egg has a lot of structural stability because once it's a sealed form, then we can start to manipulate the form to make our animal. In order to get these two pieces of clay to stick together, we have to score them and either slip them with a, a wet clay slurry or I'm gonna wet them with vinegar instead. You can either score with a pin tool, with a knife, with a fork, whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm just gonna score all along the top here so you can see that there's a surface for the clay to grab on from one side to the other. And this clay is still pretty moist. Um, you don't wanna get it so dry that when you start to manipulate it, it starts to crack. Don't, also don't want it so wet and floppy that it won't hold its form. So here's my white vinegar that I put in a little bowl earlier and my brush, and I'm just gonna paint a little bit of white vinegar. I find it's less messy than slip. Now, voila, we are going to put the two pieces together and they don't have to be exact, just close enough. And what you can do to make sure that these attach nicely is just turn them a little bit against each other so you're creating a little bit of friction. Now we've got an egg shape, but we have this seam in the middle and we wanna get rid of that seam and create a smooth surface. You can take a tool, I usually just use my finger, and I start to smooth the clay from one side down and then I'll turn the thing over and do the same thing on the other side. If you use too much slip or even too much of the um, vinegar, you'll slip and slide all over the clay and it's kind of hard to do this. And you can see that it's smooth, but it's not completely invisible yet. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. So the reason we didn't just take a big round ball of clay from the beginning and we made two pinch pots is that it must be hollow. If it's not hollow, it will explode in the kiln. You don't want that. Now, this form's a little bit rounder than I want. I really wanted a more oblong form, so you can see these little birds. It's more of an oval form. But the nice thing about once you have this air-filled space, it's pretty stable and you can squeeze it gently and the air inside will protect it from splitting apart. So now my two round form has become an oval, which is more in line with what I want my bird shape to look like. Now we wanna pinch some of the clay at the front for the head and in the back for the tail. I'm not making anatomically perfect birds. For me, it's about recreating the bird shape and no two of them are the same. They all have different faces. They all have different personalities. And I think that's part of what I enjoy so much about making these. Now, if you don't like birds and you wanna make a fish or a dinosaur or any other animal, you can certainly do that. And you can actually sculpt little pieces. You can make a, a neck, make a, like a giraffe. So you can slip and score or vinegar, uh, score and vinegar and add pieces to this. To, to sculpt different kinds of animals. I'm just gonna use the clay that I have, not add any more clay to this and create an animal that way. I wanna start pinching about an inch back, so to collar the neck here, to create what's eventually going to be my bird's head. Uh, and again, you can see as I do this, the clay cracks a little bit as the surface gets dry, so I then just smooth it. You don't really even need to add water. Pinching between the thumb and the finger. Fun fact, that's called your anatomical snuff box for all you anatomy fans. Here is going to be my bird's head. Not quite there yet, as you can see. You know, this guy's got definitely a beak and some eyes and a head. This is the blank that's gonna be the head. And now I'm gonna portion out some of the clay that's gonna be my tail. We have the beginnings of the tail, the beginnings of a head, 
It kind of looks like a push me pull you right now. You don't know which side is which, but I'm gonna choose this side for the head. So what I'm gonna do is I want him looking up a little bit. So I'm gonna define the separation between my bird's body and my bird's head just by taking the neck and using my finger and creating a little bit of a hollow there. The most defining feature of a bird is the beak. So I'm gonna take my thumb and my finger on the sides here, sort of the cheek of the bird, and I'm just gonna start pinching it into a V shape from the sides and from the top. You can make a long beak, like a piping plover beak. You can make a short beak. I've been watching the birds at my feeder. You can go and Google different birds or look in a birding book if you want some references. So now you can see that what before was just a blob, now we got a little bird head. As we make the nose, we sort of make these little pits for where the eyes are going to be. Birds' eyes are not in the front of their heads, but they're more to the sides. We'll finish the eye a little bit later after we do the tail. I usually just put a, a, a little needle tool in to make a little hole for the eyes. Rather than make little beady eyes, you could certainly make eyes that stick out if you want. I want to define the head from the body a little bit on the top. So I'm just going to use my index finger. So we have a, a little, little happy round bird. And now I want to work a little bit on the tail. As you can see from my examples, this guy's tail is a little bit up. This tail sits a little bit down, and then this tail is a little bit further out. And I'm doing exactly the same thing I did around the neck. I'm just defining with my finger a separation between the body and the tail. It's always better to have the tail a little bit elevated from the body so that when you glaze it, you don't have the tail on the shelf of the kiln. Otherwise, you'd have to wipe off all the glaze on the, on the tail because you don't want glaze touching the kiln shelf or your little bird will fuse itself to the kiln shelf and you won't be happy and the studio won't be happy. If you don't want to use your hands, you can use a wood tool and do the same thing. I like the control I get of using my hands, but the nice thing about the wood tool is if you can see, you get these marks that the glaze will fall in and it'll kind of look like feathers. So that's a surface detail that you can do even afterwards, even if you use your hands. Here we have a little, a little round bird. Now, if you'd rather his head or her head be in a different position, you can certainly do that. You can just grab the head and you can turn it so that the bird is cocking its head. You can lift it, you can lower it, whatever you want. Now's the time where you Put your bird down on your surface and you take a look at it, kind of from all sides. So this little bird looks like he's eating from the ground versus this little bird whose head is, is up. Do I want that? I don't know, maybe not. And it looks like he's rolling a little bit over to the side. So I'm just going to tap him so that it creates a little flat spot so he doesn't roll over to the side. So now I like where the bird is. I kind of like that he's down on the ground. Then I said we'd come back and define the eyes. So I'm gonna take my pin tool and I'm going to just, in the center of where the eye pit is, I'm just gonna push that right through. And don't worry if you push it right through the whole thing. You actually do want some holes in here. So again, your form doesn't explode. Now the other thing you wanna do, turn over your bird, take a pin tool, and make a hole in the bottom. And I'm just turning this in circles to make a slightly bigger hole. So you have a hollow form, and hollow form needs to have a hole. Now, if you wanna have fun, you can take a couple of tiny little balls of clay, let them dry a little bit, and put them inside. They might stick to the walls, but when, they, when, you, when it gets fired, it should come off the walls, and you'll have a rattle. So I've made a couple of those that are rattles. And there you have it, one little round bird.